Hi guys, it's me Hannah and I am in a bathroom at a pizza place. So, um, anyways, I forgot to make an introduction for this video. So I'm going to teach you how to make a Polaroid camera thing of bobber. And you'll see. Alright, enjoy. Bye. So as you can see, I cut apart some old plasticky paper construction box material. I think this is an old tampon, tampon box. It's that material. And I glued it to the back of a printout of a Polaroid camera that I found online because I'm way too lazy to draw one. Okay, so now that I have cut out all of my pictures, I'm going to need to make the strip that's going to go under the Polaroid. So I have some white paper that I got out of a pack of colored paper. I don't know what it's called. It's not construction paper, but it's not regular paper. It's just thick, so I like it more because it's more durable. And so what I want to do is I want to find the largest picture. So obviously it's either going to be the sunflowers or the beachy one. I don't know what to call them. So I'm going to see. Uh, all right, so this one's taller and this one's longer. So I'm going to use the measurements of this one because the height is not really a component of this. So I'm just going to push the other papers to the side and take my first paper. Now, I have to take this and line it up right at the edge and then I want to go down to the side and trace a line here. Just down the picture. And so on. If something little like that happens, it's okay to just ignore it. You can erase it later. Again, make sure you're using pe pencil. Or else you won't be able to erase it. But if you did, were not using pencil at that point, you don't, you can keep tracing on that side. My phone is falling. You can keep tracing on that side, and then when you're done, you can flip it over. But it's better to use pencil because someone's probably going to be seeing the other side. And if we get it on the picture, well, that wouldn't be very good. So now that you have this, you're just going to be cutting here, and that will be your strip. But before we do that, we want to make sure we get all of that. You can't see it. Erased. You can't see it, but there's a few pencil marks. Sorry about the phone falling. It's not very sturdy. So just erase these. Now, good as new. So you're going to put this back with the other ones. And along the line. Try to stay along the line unlike me. Again, I'm not a good cutter. Okay. 
There you go. Wipe this off, and there's your strip. Now, you are going to start one by one. Start with the picture you want to be up first. Now, I think I'm going to do this sunflower one first. And so I am going to put some glue what? on the back. So here. And here's the glue. Again, sorry about the background noise. I love these glue sticks. They're very cool. You just have to press. Now don't put on too much glue. And try to make sure it doesn't leak to the other side. But make sure it sticks right. So, you're going to want to, I almost forgot, leave some blank space up top. It's okay if you got a little bit of glue on it. So, here you go. Just press that on. Next, your next picture, I'm probably going to do, um, this one next. So leave some space, maybe that much, and put glue on the next one. Again, not too much glue, but not too little. The reason I say not too much, a lot of people are like, well, other than wasting glue, what harm can it do? It if you have too much glue, it will show through the paper and take away from the image. Now, this is a little uneven at the bottom. It's okay. Don't worry. I'm probably going to put a little border or something around that. And obviously, I cannot fit another picture down here. So I'm going to move on to my next paper and trace this one. So I'm trying to save this. I think I might be able to fit the rest of these just on this last paper. Yes, I can fit all three. So this should be the last one. So just line it up again as well as you can and do the same thing. Just trace it. And I know sometimes the inevitable happens and you mess up something. If it's like a giant mess up, like you're doing the last part and then you accidentally cut the entire project apart, I'm sure you can salvage some. And everything I did, I put together in about five minutes. I just printed these pictures off of the internet I and that includes the Polaroid I found some empty tampon boxes for the to make that harder to make my Polaroid harder I got a pencil from my backpack scissors I had here And other than the glue, everything was very last minute. I because this printer does I don't even have photo paper and I still got to print pictures. Now you can't see it, but I have also printed another Polaroid picture and I'm going to make a personalized Polaroid that's going to be a little bit neater and less rushed than this one. Not that this one was rushed, but it wasn't exactly the best I could do. And so I'm going to be making that for a friend. So right here, all your, what you're going to want to do is put them to a spot where you, that you like. Put a little strip or two of glue. 
and then put one of them over the other, it doesn't matter. Just about that much, so they look a little more connected. Now there's going to be a picture covering up this little gap. I think I'm going to do this one next, actually. Now, you don't have to do this, but I don't like it covering so much. So I'm going to trim the edges. This might take away from the look. But with my particular picture, I think I can get away with it. So I'm just going to be trimming the edges of my photo first before I glue it on. Now, just the same thing, not too much glue. The way I like gluing, I like covering the edges first so the edges don't pop up. And that's just like a rectangular or a square shape. This, in this case, rectangular. Then I like my X in the middle. And then I just do a zigzag just to make sure I covered everything. But the zigzag does not go past the edges. Now position it the way you like it and glue it on. Now these two papers, one of them is a lot harder than the other, so normally you wouldn't be able to see those lines. They're not very noticeable, but if you pay close attention, you can see them a little bit. Now, I think I'm going to do this one and this one because this one is preferably my favorite. And so I'm just going to finish up my strip. Now the one thing you might have to worry about, especially with the sizes of your pictures, is making sure that the Polaroid fits, which this one does not. But I'm going to figure that out when I get there. <laughs> Sorry, my neck is itchy. Last one. This is your last photo. And now, as you can see, they don't fit perfectly onto the Polaroid. And I think with my pictures, I might be able to trim them and just have the middle. So I am going to do this and take the pencil to trace down the sides. And that's why it's re recommended that you actually remember and consider the size of your Polaroid compared to the size of your pictures. So just do the same thing on the other side. You don't have to flip it over, but it's easier for me. Now obviously it's not going to come out perfect, but let's try our best. There's glue everywhere. So next you just have to cut that off. So let's do So it. as you can see, I have trimmed my strip. Now I have to take my Polaroid and glue it up top, but before I do that, I want to get folds. So I'm just going to fold in between each picture, just zigzag. This is where it helps when your pictures are the same size, which mine are not. But I'll have to deal with that. By trying to fold them to the same size and I can fold this part right here 
now that they're folded, I want to glue my Polaroid on. So I'm going to put some of my glue stick on here. By the way, in case you were wondering, this is a glue pen. It's literally, you look at the top and you squeeze it. It starts bubbling at first. But there's glue inside and it's like, I don't know how to explain it. There's like, it's like ventilation. And if you squeeze it, the glue can start coming out. And it's very cool, safe for kids. I use it at my church. And so you just glue that on. Now that's going to need some time to dry. So let's wait. Now that you've given it 5 to 10 minutes to dry, what you're going to do is fold them, flip it over, and fold them where you made your creases. And that's where your pouch comes in handy because you can tuck those into the pouch. But if you do not have a pouch or your pouch does not work, I just think this is very cute and it's a nice gift. It's like a little film strip. And if you can fold it right and cover up the sides, you might have to trim it a little more. That's okay. And let's see if I can show you the finish. Fold it all folded up and done. Now, a tip, I would use double-sided tape, but depending on what you have available, I would take the tip. Right now, all I have is my regular tape, and you can see how to make that little thing in my back-to-school DIY video. I'm not sure if it's out yet. And I'm just going to take a little piece of tape and try to take that down just so it stays. And I might do a little bit more if your photos were the same size as mine and it can't reach the tip of the photos. So this way you have your Polaroid. And then when you just take off that tape and let them hang, voila, they all come popping down. So this makes a great gift, especially if you personalize it and let's say you could make one for a friend or family member and do pictures of your little group of friends or your family. A picture of you and them, a picture of them, some goofy pictures, or some pictures of you guys together. It's a great gift. And for birthdays or events, you could do the top one, like happy birthday or something. There's a lot of different ways you can personalize it. I think it's very simple and fun. So enjoy.